Good morning. God bless you. How's everybody on today? Oh, come on. It's a beautiful day. God has been good again. What does David tell us? He says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Why? Because I sought him and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. You know, I thank God we celebrated an anniversary of sorts this week. One year with this pandemic, but thank God who's grateful in the house. Oh, come on. Come on now. I'm grateful in the house. I know some people who are dear to me that are not here today. And so I thank God I'm able to stand here and give him glory. St. Luther, we are blessed. You look so beautiful in here. We're blessed to be able to worship well. We're spread out. We can give him the glory that he's due. We thank God for those of you who are at home because we're St. Luther here, we're St. Luther there, and we're St. Luther everywhere where this word gets out. Oh, he's worthy this morning. I tell you, he's worthy this morning. As you might have guessed, I'm ready to worship. And I hope you came ready to worship too. Those of you that are on Facebook, would you please, please, please share today's message. Somebody needs a word of hope and uplift that's going to go forth on today. Service is starting. God bless you. Good morning, St. Luther. Would everyone please stand and join in with me in song this morning? Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. If you sick and you can't get Never busy, so tell me what you want. This line is never busy, so tell him what you want. This line is never busy, so tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. Jesus is on. Rejoice in the Lord all, always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer. And supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, Brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be, our, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think of these things. I have read to you Philippians 4, 4 through 8. May, we all, may the Lord forever bless the reader, hearer, and doer of his holy word. May we bow our heads and close our eyes. 
Oh, merciful Father, we come before you with bowed heads and humble hearts, Lord. And, Lord, we just want to ask you that you keep, keep guiding us, Lord. Keep guiding us through a year that we hopefully will be, be better than last, Lord. We thank you for everything they've done for us, Lord. Keep guiding us, Lord. Keep helping our families, Lord. If we are sick, Lord, I know you can help us, Lord, because you have done it before, Lord, and you, I know, I know you can do it again, yes, Lord. Yes. We thank you for everything they've done for us, Lord. I thank you for my family. I thank you for my pastor. I thank you for my first lady, and I thank you for this word that we shall receive today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah. Come on, put those hands together on this Sunday morning. Right. How many people know God will take care of them? Huh? Oh, man, I'm going to have to work hard. Ain't nobody on their feet. How many, know people, how many people know God will take care of them? Here we go. go. Y'all still ain't clapping yet. <laughs> Oh, yes, he will. He will take 
days Zang Grave How Sweet The We thank you for your presence now. Thank you, O oh Lord, for your touch. God, we decrease that thou might increase. Your word, Lord, not, not my word. And God, we are standing. But I pray, God, that uh, your people will not focus on me, but would focus on your word. To the point, God, of allowing your word to, to awake and arise, move and to stir up that that once was dormant. God, we pray that someone might hear a word and ask the question, what must I do to be saved? And God, we be careful to give you all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, this morning, the text uh, can be found in the 24th chapter of Acts. Uh, the 
24th and the 25th verses. And it reads, and after certain days when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance and judgment to come, he looks trembled and answered, go thy way for this time. And when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. And I'm going to use as a subject this, this morning the power of a few words. The, uh, the power of a few words. How, how many of you will agree with me that the words have great power? Words carry weight. And you have to be careful of not only what you say, you have to be careful of how you say it. Wars have been started and likewise peace uh, has been brokered all because of the power of words. Uh, we used to say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Uh, who isn't ashamed to say that you've been hurt by words? Amen. Hopes have uh, been boosted and dreams have been shattered by the power of a few words. Families have begun and family have ended, all because of the power of a few words. Uh, we as a nation uh, recently experienced an impeachment process, all because of the power of a few words. And whether we believe it or not, words hold tremendous power in our daily lives. And, and, and the thing about words is that once they have been spoken, amen, once they've been said, try as you might, but you can't get them back. Uh, in, a, in a court proceeding, one, one lawyer after hearing a question and maybe an answer that he or she feels isn't appropriate, hollers out objection. And if the judge rules in his or her favor, that the judge's response is sustained. And the judge may then instruct the jury to disregard what they might have heard. But you know how successful that might be, right? Because you can't unhear something. Uh, has anyone ever said something, maybe without thinking, and then realized that it wasn't a good idea? Uh, or, or maybe that you, you said it and it was taken the wrong way. You apologized, but it went over like a wet brick. Let me ask it this way. Has anyone ever put your foot in your own mouth? Words hold tremendous power. And, and the Bible is full of statements uh, regarding words and their power. Uh, Proverbs 6 and 2. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Uh, Ecclesiastes 5 and 3. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. Matthew 12, 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Glory to God. Our, our text speaks of a man who experienced uh, firsthand the power of a few words. Felix, the Roman governor, of Judea. And in this text, he's, he's listening to Paul, the apostle, preach concerning the Christian faith. Uh, that 24th verse in the text, and after certain days when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, uh, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning 
the faith in Christ. Uh, in this text, you know, Paul has been sent for. He, he's under house arrest. Uh, maybe I need to provide a little background. Uh, the, the 24th chapter begins with a court scene. Uh, the religionists were out to get rid of Paul. They wanted to get rid of him to the point that they had hired a Roman lawyer. Uh, he prepared their case, and he, he was appearing in court before the governor, Felix. And they were ready to do all they could to, to get rid of Paul once and for all. But, but listen to the attorney uh, present the case, uh, the fifth and the sixth verse. For we have found this man, uh, a pestilent fellow, and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, who also had gone about to profane the temple, whom we took, and would have judged according to our law. Now, now the charges uh, of Paul were threefold. Uh, there were primarily three charges. Uh, first of all, he was being charged with being an insurrectionist, troublemaker, a disturber of the peace. And then he was charged with being a ringleader of the Nazarenes, who were supposedly real rabble rousers. And, and, and in addition, he was being charged with being a profaner of the temple. Now, now, mind you, it was the, the religionists, uh, the Jewish uppity-ups, who were bringing these charges, not, not the people from the church. It, it, you know, if you want to get in trouble, uh, start shaking and challenging traditions of the church. Get you in trouble. Uh, Felix gave Paul an opportunity to speak on his behalf, and, and, and Paul was pretty clear. Uh, that he didn't come to cause trouble, that he had come actually to bring the church alms, and that he had come to Jerusalem not to start trouble, but to worship. Uh, and, and in fact, when he was arrested, he was worshiping, not causing trouble. And Paul made it clear that, that he hadn't been in town long enough to do all that he was being charged with, and if the people in the temple had such a problem with him, why weren't they not in court to press charges? See, there's something to be said about the simplicity of the truth and being in the will of God. Acts the 24th chapter, the 20th and the 21st verse says, or else let the same hearsay if they found any evil doing in me while I stood before the council except it be for this one voice that I cried standing among them, touching the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question by you this day. In, in other words, Paul was saying, if I'm guilty of anything, it's proclaiming the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If, if there's any truth to anything that you said I've done, is that one thing. Uh, now, now, the words of Paul and, and his sincerity uh, struck Felix in some kind of a way. You know, so he didn't give the religionists what they wanted. Now, he didn't release Paul either, but, but a few days later, he calls for Paul. Uh, 24th verse, and he says, And after certain days when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewish, he sent for Paul. Now, you know, it lets us know that how we conduct ourselves when we're under pressure, when we're being persecuted, is important because people are watching. They're watching to see our response. They know who we are, and, and, and they know we profess to be called Christians. And, and my brothers and sisters, they are taking note to see if our actions line up with who we say we are. 25th verse in the text, and he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. Felix trembled and answered, go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. Now, now the, the Bible tells us that Paul 
reasoned with Felix and his wife. Now, th this word means to mingle thought with thought, to discuss, to preach. Now, Felix wanted to hear some preaching. And, and, and sometimes, you know, you can see it in people's eyes. You know, some, sometimes people just want to hear preaching. And, and, and Paul used this time with the governor to preach the gospel. He, not, not a prosperity message, uh, not a message of everything's going to work out, but he preached the gospel. Paul, Paul, Paul preached about the righteousness of God. He's holy. He's righteous. He's almighty God. And, and he's so holy and righteous that, that he cannot even look upon sin. Uh, Paul preached about the fact that this righteous God hates sin. Now, 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 the world makes the attempt to dress up sin, but, but not God. Romans 1 and 18 said, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. You know, you know we call an accident, uh, we call it an accident. Sometimes when we do wrong, we say it's an accident. But, but, but God calls an abomination. Yeah, and what we speak of as a blunder, God called blindness. Uh, what man calls chance, God calls choice. Uh, what we call a disease, uh, God calls a defect. Well, what man calls an error, uh, God calls enmity. M man says it is nothing but weakness, but, but God calls it wickedness. And, and the bottom line is this. God is holy and man is unholy. God is pure and man is not. God is righteous and man is unrighteous. And, and I believe that, that in his preaching, uh, Paul was clear in expressing that man is a sinner and, and he stands condemned in the eyes of a righteous God. Uh, Paul is bringing Felix face-to-face -face, uh, with the fact that he is a lost sinner in need of a Savior. Again, that 25th verse. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and, and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. We're told that Paul preached about temperance. Now, this word refers to self-control. Uh, when Paul preached about righteousness, he was dealing with their character. Uh, he was talking about who they were before God. But when, when he speaks of temperance, he, he's talking about their conduct, of how they live before me. Uh, and when, when Paul began to speak of self-control, he hit this couple squarely between the eyes. And not only was Felix lacking in the righteousness department, but, but he was also missing a few bricks in the self-control area also. Uh, the name Felix means happy, uh, but this man was anything but happy. He'd been married three times. He, he lived a party-hearty life looking for happiness. He was always in deep debt, and he was always in trouble with Emperor Nero. Now, now the text also refers to his wife, Drusilla. She was the youngest daughter of King Herod Agrippa I. And, and according to history, she was a beautiful woman. And when Felix saw her, he, he hired a sorcerer to entice her to leave her husband and to marry him which she did. And so they lived a life of open sin and wickedness. And, and, and now they find themselves being preached to by a preacher who's calling out their sins. Uh, can, can you ever remember a time when a sermon seemed to be all about you and all for you? And, and when you wanted the, the, the preacher to change the subject, to go on to the next point, 
you were getting ready to say amen, and then you say, I know he didn't. When, when Paul addressed Felix, he, he was speaking to a man who had lost his dignity, his morality, and even his decency. And when he addressed Drusilla, he was speaking to a woman who had lost her decency, her modesty, and her purity. And he was speaking to a couple who uh, were morally bankrupt and evil, through and through. And, and, and one of the tragedies, I think, of this uh, modern time is that preachers have to be careful as to how they confront people with the word of God concerning their lifestyle. But, you know, and I want you to know that God isn't happy with what is going on in this world. Society tries to sanitize sin, uh, to make folk feel better about what they're doing. Uh, we, we call lying a credibility gap. Uh, adultery has become an affair. Uh, we call, we, we, we call uh, uh, stealing embezzlement. Uh, drunkenness has become a disease. Sodomy has become an alternative lifestyle. Fornication has become flirtation. But God still has one word that sums it all up. Sin. Sin is sin. And one day, all that sin is going to catch up with the sinner. And since, since Paul was preaching about the Christian faith, I, I'm sure he, he took the time to tell them that God had made a way uh, for them to save themselves from sin. I, I'm sure he, he pointed them to Calvary, told them of a Savior who, who died to take away their sins. Uh, and, and in the text, we're told that Paul preached to them about the judgment to come. And he told Felix and, and Drusilla that there was coming a day uh, when they will face this righteous, sin-hating God in judgment if they did not repent. Glory to God. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have uh, a convenient season, I will call for thee. Now, now, whatever it was that Felix heard, it made him tremble. Now, now, now the, word, the word means to be thrown into fear, to become horrified. And, and, and I think for the first time, Felix understood the truth that he was a lost sinner, abiding under the wrath of a holy and righteous God. I, I think he came to see that he was in serious trouble with the God in heaven. Somebody listen to me right now. Trembling. Fully aware of the fact that, that you are lost and on your way to hell because of sin. But I got good news for you. There is a way out. His, his name is Jesus. And if you'll come to him, he will save you from your sins. And, and deliver you from an eternity in hell. He and he alone is the way to God. John 14, chapter the sixth verse says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none under the name, under the name of under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Powerful words had been spoken. And it was now time for Felix to make a decision. Paul's words had power. He trembled. But the text says that, that, that nevertheless, he sent Paul away. Told him, I'll let you know when I'm ready for this. Don't call me. I'll call you. Uh, this wasn't the kind of preaching that, that Felix wanted to hear. Felix wanted to be entertained. And, and, and here Paul comes along and, and starts to, as, as we say, he was meddling. He, he, he was getting all up in Felix's business. And I've been there too, Paul. 
Some subjects you can't preach on. The people will send you on your way. And if you won't go, they will. Or they won't come back. Y'all might as well say, man. It, it, it was time to make a choice. Uh, believe in uh, repentance or continuing rejection. And, and as Felix was being convicted of his sins by uh, the word of God, uh, he made a terrible decision. He, he closed his ears to what Paul was saying and, and refused to embrace the message. You know, now, now, Felix didn't say that, that he never wanted to hear Paul's message about salvation again. He, he just said that he wasn't ready for it right now. Uh, he, he was guilty of what uh, many have also been guilty of, waiting, procrastination. Uh, maybe trying to get ready to receive what only needs to be accepted. Uh, has anyone ever witnessed to someone and, and their response was they were not ready yet? And, you know, when God's word come to us with convicting power, uh, we should never put off our response. Uh, the gospel warrants a response. It, it's getting late in the evening and the sun is going down. You, you, you might hear the same truth again, uh, uh, but it might not bring conviction the next time. See, there's nothing like the first time. And, and it caused Felix to tremble. Some who have heard the good news for years have hardened their heart, and it has no effect on them at all. And so whenever you come under conviction, while hearing the truth. My brothers and my sisters, you need to take action to make sure that you don't suffer spiritual loss. If the Spirit moves you to teach, then you take steps to teach. If the Spirit is moving you to give, then you ought to do it. If there's an urge or move of the Spirit to witness, then you ought to open your mouth. For, uh, how many times have you felt God moving you to do something? Uh, you didn't do it, but later you wish you had. Yeah, I need to finish up here. But, but if God is speaking, it, 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 uh, it is always the right time to do the right thing. N now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. I thank you, Jesus. I, I thank you, Holy Ghost. Paul, in his sermon to Felix, oh Lord, he spoke of the judgment, the judgment to come. Can I use our Holy Ghost imagination? You see, we're at the great white judgment. Yes. And everybody is there. The lost of the ages are gathered there. The great and the not so great, they're there also. And the books are already open. I'm talking about the book of deeds. Every deed that, that lost men have ever done are recorded in those books. Hold oh, on. But I got a question. What would you do if you were standing at the great white throne of judgment? Hold oh, on looking at the scene of eternity where your whole life for the world to see was flashing before your very eyes and there also is the book of life and in this book of life there are names also Glory to God. 
names of those who have trusted in Jesus Jesus as their personal Savior and the judge is on the throne I'm still using my Holy Ghost imagination but in walks a man and and the judge on the throne says what's your name sir and he says, my name is Felix. Felix, I'm sorry, sir, but your name is not here. Oh, but you know me. I'm the Felix in the Bible. You read about me, and I'm in the Bible. I'm the Felix. Listen to them. I'm the same one that heard Paul preach and what a sermon it was that he preached on that night. Hold oh, on. I was so convicted that I shook like a leaf. I'm sorry, sir, but your name is not written. But you don't understand. I'm ready now. I, I know that I should have done it, but I'm ready now. I, I see this thing is serious. Oh, Lord. Yes, sir. I repent now. I trust Christ. Oh, Lord. I'm sorry, sir. Your name is not written in the book. Depart from me ye cursed into everlasting oh but you don't understand I'm Felix and I want to be saved now I'm sorry sir there is no record of your new birth and in my mind I can see Felix walking away with his head held down but I hear the Lord calling out the Felix. I, I thank you, Jesus. I thank your Holy Ghost. I didn't intend for you to be lost. I, 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 I shed my blood on a hill called Calvary so that you could make it in, make it into heaven. And we out of here. But there are a few words that I must say. God's mercy reaches out to you. God's grace will still receive you. Because God has promised to forgive you of your sins. God loves you with an everlasting love. And God longs for your fellowship. And, and right now, God truly cares for you. I thank you, Jesus. I thank your Holy Ghost. I'm speaking of a few powerful words, none more powerful than the word that Jesus spoke from the cross. Father, 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 forgive them, for they know not, know not what they do. Father, hold on to the Lamb has now been provided. Father, the blood has now been shed. Father, the atonement has now been made. Father, the debt has now been paid. Father, the law has now been fulfilled. Father, the plan has now been completed. And, and so now, Father, when they repent and turn from the wicked ways, and accept me as the Lord and Savior.
then Father, forgive them and forgive them for my sake. Is there anybody in here happy but me? For those few powerful words, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgive them for their mistakes and their sins. Forgive them for going left when they should have gone right. Forgive them when they should have stayed at home. Forgive them when they should have turned a deaf ear. Forgive them when they fail. Hallelujah had a chance to get back up but they continue to wallow in the mud somebody say glory somebody say hallelujah those few powerful words forgive forgive them forgive them of their sins somebody said glory somebody say hallelujah God I thank you thank you for your son Jesus God, I thank you for what he did on the cross. Glory to God. He became sin for your sake and for my sake. Hallelujah. The record is they lifted him high and they stretched him wide. They put nails in his hand. They put rivets in his feet. And if that wasn't enough, they pierced them in his side. And the record is that the blood came streaming down. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Something happened on the inside of the man called Jesus until the blood looked like sweat coming out of his body but that wasn't any normal kind of blood hallelujah because that blood was a cleansing blood and that blood was a restoring blood that blood was a healing blood they whipped my savior all night long Glory to God, but I read a word. I know it's in the Bible. It said, by his stripes, we are already healed. Glory. I thank God for what he did on the cross. And the word said that he died. Glory to God. And they buried him in a borrowed tomb. But the story doesn't end there because on the third day morning, he rose, he rose with all power in his hand. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And he stood around long enough for there to be witnesses that he did rise and then he ascended into heaven and he's sitting on the right hand of the father and guess what he's doing he's making intercessions for you and for me glory glory hallelujah thank you thank you somebody ought to praise him Somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to give him glory. Somebody ought to say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If he made a difference in your life, tell him thank you. Thank you. If he's ever touched your body, tell him thank you. Thank you. If he delivered you, from your terrible ways if you're not ashamed just tell him thank you thank you of a few words it is finished <laughs> glory to God it's work already been done
since I met Jesus. There's been a burning, oh, such a burning deep down within. And he holds, he holds me with his own unseen power. And he keeps me, he keeps me from all sin. Thank you, Jesus. And he changed, changes me from day to day. As I walk, I walk alone. This old narrow way. Since I met Jesus, Jesus, since he changed this old life of mine, make me want to run home and shout hallelujah till the end. It's your is easy. It's easy. His burdens are light. His burdens are light. I'm just going to walk where I know. I know I'll always. I'm gonna cherish, I'm gonna cherish this whole race, and I'm running, I'm gonna keep on running, and by God's great, I know I'll make it, I'll make it home. His yoke is easy. His burden, his burdens are light. I'm gonna walk where. Gonna cherish this rain. I'm gonna keep running with haste, and by my God's grace, Amen. Maybe there's there's somebody who has listened and there was a trembling. You, you, you heard something. You were like the, the jailer. And when Paul and Silas experienced an earthquake at midnight, maybe you're like that, that jailer that, that, that called out, what must I do to be saved? Uh, all you got to do is just want it. All you got to do is just ask for it. It begins with repentance. And repentance is different from I'm sorry. Repentance is I'm not going to do it again. I'm sorry is I just feel bad about it. But repentance says not only do I, I feel sorry, but I'm not going to do it again. I'm sorry is about emotions. 
Repentance is about intent. And when you repent because of your intent, even if you fail, it's just like doing it all over again. It's just like that first time because it was your intent. He forgave you. He cleansed you from all unrighteousness. He wiped it all away. And so if I, if I, may, if I fail again, it's like the first time all over again. If I repent, not I'm sorry, but if I repent, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If, if there's anyone who's listening to me that wants to be saved, glory to God, wherever you are. All you got to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me of my sins. God, God I accept you as my personal savior. God, I invite you into my life. God, I can't do it on my own. But I know, God, that, the, that, that if, I, if I lean and if I, I, I trust in you, that you will lead me in the way. That you would keep me with your unseen power. God, I thank you. I thank you. And that's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. But don't you dare stop there. Because the enemy runs to and fro to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the moment you say, I do, he's going to say, you can't. And he's going to bring up every reason why you can't. In your left ear and in your right ear. And he's going to put stuff in your, in your pathway that might cause you to stumble. You need to get yourself to a church. Get yourself to a church underneath some sound teaching. You, you can't stay a baby. you got to grow up. And the way you grow up, you grow up in the word. Amen. Not by your experiences, but you grow up in the word. I, I, I'm a man that, that, that truly believes that I don't want to experience everything that there is to experience. A man that wants to experience everything there is to experience is a fool. Glory to God. I'd rather learn from his word rather than experiencing myself. Hallelujah. Do that. Do that. Do that. Somebody say amen. Amen. Good afternoon, greetings St. Luther family. Just prior to COVID-19 outbreak last March, we had our men's day observance. Your contributions are to be commended. COVID-19 has impacted all of our lives in similar ways and in different ways. However, I think we can all agree and we can say, but God. Men day is one of our special offering events that we ask St. Luther night to contribute $150. We believe COVID-19 has been a time of breaking up fertile ground in us as well as our church. A seed planted now has the potential of a great harvest for our church and us as well. On behalf of our pastor and the officers of St. Luther, we want to thank you in advance for, for your contribution. We look forward to seeing you on March the 21st at 1045 for our Men Day observance. God forever bless you. Amen, amen, amen. You know, I'm not going to embarrass anybody. I see some new people I ain't seen in years. But I ain't going to say I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. But I will say, I, I, I see, uh, now I can say, uh, Mother Diane Harris. Uh, Miss Harris has been added to the Mother's Board. Amen. She's been so 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 faithful, even over this last year, and uh, so I really really appreciate appreciate her uh, accepting uh, the assignment. And before we end, I think I just want to have prayer uh, for a few people I know that are that are on my mind and on my on my heart. Um, Sister Stubbs, um, Sister Sonia Andrews. Still praying uh, for um, the Moltons uh, in their uh, recovery. Uh, they received uh, the negative test. Amen. 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 I'm still praying for uh, the McDaniels, loss of their grandson. Amen. Amen. 
that's 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 hard. Amen. I I, I know firsthand um, what that can do to a person if you allow it. For my mother-in-law, lost a son and a grandson, all with the same name. So I, I, I understand. And so my prayers are, are with them. Uh, Father God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. And God, we thank you for your mercy. And God, we thank you for forgiveness. And we thank you, God, for being there to, to lean on. God, I, we place our trust in you. And your word lets us know that blessed is the man that places his trust in you. And so, God, it is, it is you who we lean on. It's, it's you who we depend upon. And God, I pray for these that are gathered here on today and those that are listening. I pray, God, that you would continue to, to wrap their arms around them, continue uh, to protect them. And God, I pray that you stir up something on the inside of them, stir up that, that which has been dormant. God, I pray that you help them see their way out of a predicament that they might be in. And God, we just thank you. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your Holy Ghost power. Thank you for those few words, amen, that were, that were spoken. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And God, we, these few remnants who have been carrying on in your name for your purpose. God, I'm praying that you will shower, pour out a blessing that they would not have room enough to receive. Touch their bodies. God, reward the faithfulness, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and be dismissed. I need you, you need me, we're all a part of God's body, stand with me, agree with me, we're all a part of God's body, it is his will that every need be supplied you are important to me I need you to survive you are important to me I need you to survive may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, now and forever. Let us all sing. Amen. 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 Man, wave at him. Wave at him. Wave at him. Yay. So it's the heart. Yeah, we're going to wave at you. It's only what, been two, three years, ain't it? I want to thank each and every one of you who uh, worshiped you with us. The Hendrix uh, back today. there. It was indeed a pleasure. I know things are tough everywhere, but we're praying for those who are uh, without water or without uh, power. Uh, I pray that something was said on today or you um, uh, heard uh, the melody of a song that uh, touched your heart. And we pray uh, that you would worship uh, with us uh, again. Um, we thank God for you.